Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and in today's video we're going to be covering what we know so far about the diving mechanics in Coral Island. I believe that this element of the game will be one of the distinct features that set it apart from similar games in the genre, and I'm really excited to see how it ends up being implemented. There's a lot to cover on this topic, and I did a lot of research for this video. I did my best to piece together a bunch of little clues that the development team has left scattered across the internet. As always, please remember that this game is still in early development, so everything is subject to change, and much of what I'll be saying in this video is just speculation at this point. But without any further Without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Let's start by taking a look at the Coral Island diving map. We will have access to four different diving spots on Coral Island, north, south, east, and west, with the ability to dive on each map at four different depths, 10, 20, 30, and 40 meters deep. It appears that we will need to meet some sort of requirement to unlock the deeper depths as we progress through the diving experience and quest lines. This requirement may be related to the overall level of ocean cleanliness and progress with helping Ling, who works at the Coral Island lab studying the coral reefs, but we'll get deeper into this a little bit later in the video. Overall, in terms of the diving experience, I'm really hoping that the distinct diving maps will each have unique environmental elements, collectibles, and layouts based on both the locations location and depth. On the map of Starlet Town, we can see a little icon indicating where one of the diving spots might be located, on the southern pier. However, it is unknown whether we will access all maps from this spot exclusively by using a fast travel function, or if there will be multiple diving spots across the island from where we can pull up the same diving map. Regardless, I do believe that we will choose where we wish to dive from the diving map itself, and I highly doubt that we will be required to physically go to each side of the island in order to dive at that location. I believe that this approach would just be much too time consuming in a game like this, however I could be wrong, so we'll just have to wait and see. In order to actually go diving, we will be required to equip a diving suit. In the trailer, we can see a cabinet full of diving suits at the laboratory, and it has been noted in the developer diaries that the diving suits have the latest Starlet Town technology by Ling. Since the lab is her workplace, this is most likely where we will acquire the suits. Interestingly, it is also noted that we are able to purchase diving equipment at the beach shack, so this is another possibility. I'm imagining that we will get our main suit from Ling at the lab, but maybe some upgrades or fun accessories at the beach shack, like various oxygen tanks, masks, flippers, and more. I would really like to see the ability to upgrade our diving equipment over time to enhance various underwater functions. And I would also love to have different styles, patterns, and colors of suits that we could purchase or unlock as a reward in the story. I'm thinking something like the diving suit equivalent to the farmer overalls that we've seen in the early look at character custom. In terms of exploration underwater, it seems that there will be some sort of save system implemented for returning to the ocean floor. As in the developer diaries, there's a note to save the last player location when exiting a diving level, and another stating they fixed diving enter location is not on the last exit location. Am I speaking English? <laughs> Basically they fixed a bug where when they entered the underwater map, it did not spawn them to the location that they last left off on. So it does seem that we can pick up right where where we left off underwater, at least to some extent. This would come in handy so that we could have various save points to return to underwater without having to traverse the entire dive map each and every time we enter the ocean. There is also a note that says save slash load cleaned level state, so I'm predicting that the save point will potentially be triggered once we've met certain conditions of cleanliness in any given area. There's also mention of a diving time limit in their notes, so I'm thinking that this must have to do with limits to our oxygen tanks. I wonder if this is something that can be upgraded over time to allow for longer dives. I sure hope so. There are a number of underwater collectibles that we can discover throughout our time spent at the ocean floor, and it is noted that the team has added many loot objects to diving. According to the Coral Island Wiki, we can find kelp, chests, pearls, and other underwater scavengeables. The addition of finding chests underwater is definitely news to me, but you all know I've been hoping for some sunken treasures, so I'm definitely looking forward to this. I wonder if the chests will contain gold, gems, artifacts? Maybe like the silver spoon and the silver fork, which are the only two known artifacts at this point. Perhaps we can use sunken treasures to help piece together the history and lore of Coral Island, but if nothing else, we can surely donate them to the museum and maybe Scott can give us some insight on their significance. Now, in my previous video, I actually shared really great information from the more recent developer diaries, so I will link that video in the description and I would highly suggest checking it out, but one of the notes that I did share there mentioned sea scavenger 
vegetables, specifically oysters, scallops, mussels, and sea snails. I'm thinking and hoping that this is indicative of an expansive foraging system being implemented underwater and that these will just be more underwater collectibles. Now, as I previously mentioned, we are also able to collect sea kelp from the ocean floor. We harvest kelp using our scythe and process it into bottled kelp using an extractor. We are then able to bring the bottled kelp to Ling at the lab, which can be used to upgrade our seeds and feeds with the goal of producing higher quality crops and animal products. Aside from general exploration, foraging, and just vibing underwater, there will be a number of objectives for us to complete as we dive. The first known goal is to clean up the trash found on the ocean floor. Now, I'm not trying to point any fingers, but I think we can all suspect that a lot of the trash is likely originating from Pufferfish Drilling Corporation, since we know that they do have a dump site on Coral Island. However, I'm sure a lot of it too is just general accumulation of litter over time. Based on the trailer, it appears that we will use our pickaxe to break up piles of trash, collect it, and remove it from the ocean floor. We will then be able to use gathered trash to complete various community projects, as further shown in the trailer here, where it is indicated that 100 pieces of trash, among other materials, are required in order to complete the community garden project. Trash might also be required in the completion of the museum, recycling center, and other similar community projects. I'm also hoping that we will be able to use trash when crafting various furniture items to further promote the idea of reusing and recycling our waste products in everyday life. Once we clear the trash from a certain area of the diving map, I'm guessing this would trigger a save point and like I previously mentioned, the unlocking of new areas, depths, and maps. It is unclear to me if and at what rate trash will respawn because I've seen contradicting notes in the diaries. For example, the note, disabled trash from respawning, and another note, fixed bug, beacon cannot detect new generated trash. Wait, did I just say beacon? I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. We'll get to that in a minute. Back to the trash, from my logical perspective, having zero trash respawn after cleaning it up would not make sense based off of typical human behavior. However, it would be very time consuming and impractical to have to constantly maintain the cleanliness of all of the maps on the ocean floor in a game like this, where there's also a lot of other important mechanics occurring on land. Unless we can really slow down the time substantially, invest in some seriously heavy duty oxygen tanks, and magically increase our stamina exponentially. This is another one of those things that we will just have to wait and see about. Now, let me address the mention of beacons, and please bear with me because I'm just trying to use my brain power, put some puzzle pieces together, and get a glimpse of the bigger picture. Let's start with a known fact, and that is our adorable, intelligent diving companion, Kibblebot. This cute critter made its grand entrance to help assign alpha roles on the Discord to Kickstarter backers, but it will also make a seemingly very important appearance in the game. It has been confirmed that Kibble will accompany us while we're diving, and it seems that Kibble will be pretty cute based on not only the illustration, but also the dev diaries that state it will have logic for its emotions, and Kibble will have a wandering animation as well as many faces and expressions. I'm very excited and wonder if in the future we will be able to customize Kibble to any extent. But what does Kibble actually do? Well, Kibble has a scanner and apparently the ability to find beacons. Notes indicative of this include modify drone scanning and find beacon sound assets and drone finding beacon behavior. Not only can Kibble find said beacons, but Kibble can also fix them. Kibble might also be able to receive communications from above water as indicated by the notes drone incoming message sound and alert sound for drone. Now again, what are these beacons? I'm talking about. Well, since we know that Ling is conducting research with her fellowship student Surya at the Coral Island Laboratory, this is most definitely related to their project. Ling's bio shares that she has dedicated her life to studying coral reefs and how to make them more resistant to rising ocean temperatures. I would highly recommend reading into this issue in general if it's newer to you, but in essence, climate change caused by destructive human behavior has led to a rising global temperature and thus warmer ocean temperatures. Coral simply cannot survive in these temperatures in their natural state, so we end up with dead, bleached coral. Without healthy living coral, much, if not most, of the underwater diversity is struggles to survive, and since everything in nature is interconnected, all of this has many consequences for the fate of the planet at large. This is obviously an incredibly serious and important issue in real life, but it also ties back to the diving aspects, quest lines, and stories of Coral Island. It seems that we will be helping Ling with her efforts to heal and restore the ocean's ecosystem around Coral Island, and beacons are often used underwater to monitor various environmental factors and can also 
act as placekeepers, tracking devices, or underwater locators. I'm guessing that maybe some of the beacons that Ling had placed underwater to assist her research have become buried over time with trash, and it is our job, alongside our trusty companion Kibble, to relocate them and clear the trash around them. As hinted by the notes, beacon patrolling and clean trash, implemented beacon long range pinging visual effects, beacon count, and collect material on beacon. In addition, the beacons are seemingly able to monitor the health status of the surrounding coral, perhaps in conjunction with the ocean temperatures, as it is noted that the beacon color will change to yellow when the coral is sick. Over and above the beacon system, which in summary is likely used to gather data and track underwater locations and activities, we also know that there is a coral nursery, which I mentioned in my previous video. We are likely to also have objectives related to nursing bleached and fragmented coral back to health and helping it become more resistant to those rising ocean temperatures. It also seems as though the marine life will be responsive to our efforts underwater, as it is noted that the schools of fish will react to ocean cleanliness, which I think will be so rewarding and sweet. And not only will the fish and other sea creatures be happier, but so will the merfolk. Oh, you didn't think I was gonna end this video with science, did you? Uh-uh, no way. <laughs> we can't forget that we will have the opportunity to encounter the merfolk as we are diving. We've seen Denali in the trailer of the game, and it appears in this scene that she needs help to free a sea turtle that is stuck in a pile of trash and netting. I'm predicting that through our acts of cleaning the ocean floor, we will gradually gain trust with the merfolk and eventually will be granted access to their kingdom. In their kingdom, we will meet 20 merfolk in total, be able to develop friendships with 10 of those characters, and maybe even find love with one of the two romanceables. The merfolk kingdom was a Kickstarter stretch goal, so expect to see this come into the game quite a bit later down the line. Wow, that was a lot of information. Are you still here? You better be because now it's time for your top comments. In my last video where I predicted that the team was working on a Coral Island cemetery, Stephen Chip suggested that there might even be a ghost NPC or townie. Even though this might be a stretch, could you imagine if they were also romanceable? Honestly, this idea is so funny to me, but who knows what could happen on Coral Island? The sky really seems to be the limit, so thank you for the good laugh, Stephen. Leave a comment on this video about what you're most excited for within the diving experience on Coral Island, and maybe you'll be featured in my next video. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. Today we have the cutest artwork of Denali by Quinn. I absolutely love how the coral and the sea inspired features all look so vibrant and healthy, just like how we want to see them in real life and as the outcome for Coral Island in the game. This artwork is just the sweetest and I can't wait to dive in the game. I'm so excited to explore the depths of the ocean and meet the merfolk, clean up the ocean, help the animals, and so much more. So thank you so much, Quinn, for sharing this beautiful artwork. And as always, I will link her information in the description. And there you have it, friends. That is everything that we know so far, I think, about the diving mechanics for Coral Island. This is such a huge aspect of the game and there's so much involved in it. There's still so much we don't know. I was expecting to see an update on it at some point, but I think we're just gonna be thrown into it in the alpha, which by the way, we will be able to dive on all four maps in the alpha, at least to some extent. And although I won't be able to share that information with any of you just yet, if you are playing the alpha, I will see you on the alpha discord. It's honestly so close. I can't believe it. We only have like a week left until it's here. I am counting down the days. <laughs> so excited. I wanted to get this video out before the alpha so I could authentically speculate and cover the information that is actually out there without feeling like I was keeping anything from you guys while I play the alpha when I do have more information. So of course I'll do an updated video on the diving mechanics later down the line once I'm able to. As always, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and until next time, take care.